Guys, we have the screen team. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for listening on KWOC. Also, thanks for uh, viewing us on our official screen team YouTube channel. You can check out our videos on Facebook and at our official website at screenteampb.com. We've got Sue with us, and Sue and I are reviewing Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan films. And uh, they did three of them together, so we've got three reviews for you. We've already done You've Got Mail. And, uh, Sue, there was a little point that you wanted to uh, hit on with uh, the You've Got Mail. Oh, well, it's at the very beginning, and if you get the DVD, you'll find that they're panning over on a graphic artist art point of view, mm-hmm. this um, island of Manhattan. And I wasn't sure it was the island of Manhattan, because I, as I look at cities, I think, well, these are the landmarks. It wasn't until they saw, until I saw Central Park, and then I realized something. They didn't have the Twin Towers there. The Twin Towers, as you know, came down in 2001. Right. And in ni- and this film was done in 1980. They'd already replaced it in this graphic art rendition of with One World Trade Center, the brand new building. And I started thinking about how the fact that we tear down the symbols of our history, and in this piece of graphic art, they've torn down one of the symbols of our history, and that is to remember the Twin Towers and the tragedy that occurred. So I'm a little disturbed by the fact that we would tear down those pieces of history and those symbols because how do we remember our history and learn from our history right. unless they're there right that's interesting i'd like to to go back and, and view that um we're going to move on uh sue and we're going to talk about joe versus the volcano and before we did our commercial break i said that i'm not a fan of this film um i'm so much not a fan of this film that I consider it one of the worst films of all time. That's just me. Um, I re- Sue, before we get into this, I remember I saw this movie in theaters with my parents. I think I was maybe 10, 11. Didn't know too much about movies. Um, but I remember sitting in the theater thinking, this is pretty bad. <laughs> I remember th- as a 10-year-old, I'm like, this, this movie's not very good. And I hadn't seen it since now. And nothing has changed in 30-plus years, Sue. So I'm curious, Joe versus the Volcano, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I felt the same way, if you want me, to, at the beginning. and mm-hmm. then I. But I want to say, of the three films, this is the film that has made me think the most. Really? And I was really kind of bothered by that. And I want to tell you that when Joe and I started watching this a couple of weeks ago, because I hadn't seen it in years either, mm-hmm. And I fell asleep after 15 minutes, and Joe had to stop it, and then we had to re- and then we right. had to rewatch it the next night. And when it opens up, I just sat there and thought, "Oh my gosh, how tedious is this?" Because you know these men are and women are slogging up to the factory, and it's just done, 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 and it's just and it's 16 tons playing, right? And it's just so. And then it's I think it's trite because then you have the supervisor who keeps saying over and over and over again, and I wish I had counted how many times he said <laughs> he said well, yes, he's qualified for the job, but can he do the job? And he says this over, and like you said, over and over again. And I was really disgusted. And Joe is obviously this broken down creature of, you know, he's not, I don't even know if I'd call him a man, he's a creature. And he's just broken down doing this awful job in this awful place. And I thought, am I going to have to watch this the rest of the film? And then it keeps going on. And then you have you have four characters are four people in there who are of the old school of acting. And that's Robert Stack, Ozzie Davis, Lloyd Bridges, and Abe Vigoda, who all have parts in this film. And so as we move through, and then Meg Ryan is at the beginning and she plays a secretary. But not only does Meg Ryan play the secretary, she plays three roles. That's right. She plays the secretary. Then later on, she uh, is the daughter of the character of Lloyd Bridges, who is this very wealthy man. And last but not least, she is the half-sister. Yeah. And also the daughter. And so I'll give you a hint. That's where the love interest comes in. <laughs> <laughs> so as we're, but as we're moving through. So, I, yes, I hated it. I really did. I was like you. But then also as it went on, I thought, well, Meg Ryan, you know, you see the depth of her as an actress because she really does play these three roles and she plays three different people. And so you get to see the depth of her ability. But then I begin think, and then as we learn about Tom Hanks, who has this incurable illness, supposedly, I'll let that hint go out there. And then as, as, as Tom Hanks begins to, he was a firefighter, he 
I would say, and now we would call it PTSD, probably. Mm -hmm. And so there was a hopelessness in him and trying, but he was also considered a very brave and very good firefighter. And as and then he's told he has this incurable disease, and he goes into this, and then he goes, and they tell him, and so this Lloyd Bridges character comes and says, well, I, we need a sacrifice to the volcano. <laughs> <laughs> All improbable, right? Right. <laughs> but okay, if this is what the people believe. But then again, you start thinking about the symbolism of that. Well, Joe's a firefighter. Well, he's going to be the sacrifice. He's fighting the volcano, another fire. Right. Remember, he was a brave man. And so we talk about all of these things and i see this as fairy t- t- fairy tale scenes of survival which are highly improbable but they work and in fact joe's life one of the things they talk about how many times he went into fires and came out unbelievably unbelievably unscarred mm-hmm. and it's the same thing with this he goes through some issues such as an incurable disease goes through a shipwreck and goes through a uh, volcano and then another survival at sea so and also i just as a as a little side note don't you think that the director of castaway told tom to channel <laughs> his Joe? scenes from yeah. the volcano i'm i'm i'm, I'm curious because every you've, you've made a lot of points that i didn't even think about do you do you think it's fair to say that there with this particular film there was a good idea there was a good blueprint to this film but maybe the execution didn't work out as as well with the movie do you think i i would probably say so but there what a uh, critic that I admire greatly mm-hmm. who has passed away, Roger Ebert loved all three of these films and he loved... Even Joe, Joe versus, versus Volcano? Volcano. Joe versus Raj. Volcano. And I I just sit there and I'm just amazed by it. But what better way to go than the way you love fighting fires? Yeah. And fighting the fire of the volcano is a part of it, but also finding love at the end. And finding himself. So maybe there is a there is a there's a lot of symbolism. Maybe here's what I think. I think they were too heavy handed with the symbolism. Yeah. And I think as a result we got mired down in that and we didn't see the big picture. We just saw the pieces and the parts. And that's why I think it's that it's like that. But oh well. <laughs> Sue. Excellent job. If I hadn't seen this movie, I'd want to go see it, man. Great job, Sue. Oh, thank you, um, Chris. It's Joe versus the volcano. I say stay away from it. Sue, though, says there's a little bit more to it, a little bit more depth. So uh, decide for yourself. Joe versus the volcano. You can find it on DVD. Coming up after the break, one of my all time favorite romantic comedies. It's Sleepless in Seattle. It's next on KWOC.